We meet in a week that could change the United Kingdom forever. Indeed, it could end the United Kingdom as we know it. On Thursday, Scotland votes and the future of our country is at stake. On Friday, people could be living in a different country with a different place in the world and a different future ahead of it. This is a decision that could break up our family of nations and rip Scotland from the rest of the United Kingdom. And we must be very clear, there is no going back from this, no rerun. This is a once and for all decision. If Scotland votes yes, the UK will split and we will go our separate ways forever. When people vote on Thursday, they're not just voting for themselves, but for their children and grandchildren and the generations beyond. So I want to speak very directly to the people of this country today about what is at stake. I believe I speak for millions of people across England, Wales and Northern Ireland, and many in Scotland too, who would be utterly heartbroken by the breakup of our United Kingdom. Utterly heartbroken to wake up on Friday morning to the end of the country we love. To know that Scots would no longer join with the English, Welsh and Northern Irish in our Army, Navy and Air Force, or in our UK-wide celebrations and commemorations, or in our UK sporting teams from the Olympics to the British Lions. The U United Kingdom would be no more. No UK pensions, no UK passports, no UK pound. The greatest example of democracy the world has ever known of openness, of people of different nationalities and faiths coming together as one, would be no more. It would be the end of a country that launched the Enlightenment, that abolished slavery, that drove the Industrial Revolution, that defeated fascism. The end of a country that people around the world respect and admire. The end of a country that all of us call home. And you know what? We built this home together. It's only become Great Britain because of the greatness of Scotland, because of the thinkers, the writers, the artists, the leaders, the soldiers and inventors who have made this country what it is. It's Alexander Fleming and David Hume, J.K. Rowling and Andy Murray, and all the millions of people who've played their part in this extraordinary success story. The Scots who led the charge on pensions and the NHS and social justice we did all this together. For the people of Scotland to walk away now would be like painstakingly building a home and then walking out the door and throwing away the keys. So I would say to everyone voting on Thursday, please remember, this isn't just any old country. This is the United Kingdom. This is our country. And you know what makes us truly great? It is not our economic might or our military prowess. It's our values, British values, fairness, freedom, justice. The values that say wherever you are, whoever you are, your life has dignity and worth. The values that say we don't walk on by when people are sick. We don't ask for your credit card in the hospital. We don't turn our backs when you get old and frail. We don't turn a blind eye or a cold heart to people around the world who are desperate and crying out for help. This is what Britain means. This is what makes our country, yes, the greatest on earth. And it's why millions of us could not bear to see that country ending for good forever on Friday. Now, I know there are many people across Scotland who are planning to vote yes. I understand why this might sound appealing. It's the promise of something different. I also know that the people who are running the Yes campaign are painting a picture of Scotland that's better in every way, and they can be good at painting that picture. But when something looks too good to be true, that's usually because it is. And it's my duty to be clear about the likely consequences of a Yes vote. Independence would not be a trial separation, it would be a painful divorce. 
And as Prime Minister, I have to tell you what that would mean. It would mean we no longer share the same currency. It would mean the armed forces we built up together over centuries being split up forever. It would mean our pension funds being sliced up at some cost. It would mean the borders we have would become international and may no longer be so easily crossed. It would mean the automatic support that you currently get from British embassies when you're traveling around the world, that would come to an end. It would mean over half of Scottish mortgages suddenly, from one day to the next, being provided by banks in a foreign country. It would mean that interest rates in Scotland are no longer set by the Bank of England with all the stability and security that promises. And it would mean for any banks that remain in Scotland, if they ever got into trouble, it would be Scottish taxpayers and Scottish taxpayers alone that would bear the costs. It would mean that we no longer pool resources across the whole of our United Kingdom to pay for institutions like our National Health Service or our welfare system. This is not guesswork. There are no question marks, no maybe this or maybe that. The nationalists want to break up UK funding on pensions, the UK funding on health care, the UK funding and comprehensive protection on national security. These are the facts. This is what would happen. An end to the things that we share together. And the people of Scotland must know these facts before they make this once and for all decision. Now to warn of the consequences is not to scaremonger. It's like warning a friend about a decision that they might take that will affect the rest of their lives and the lives of their children. I say all this because I don't want the people of Scotland to be sold a dream that disappears. Now, I know that some people say we've heard about the risks and the uncertainties, but we still want change. And look, the United Kingdom is not a perfect country. No country is. And of course, we must constantly change and improve people's lives. No one is content while there are still children living in poverty. No one is content when there are people struggling and young people not reaching their full potential. And yes, of course, every political party is different. But all of us, all of us, conservatives, Labour, Lib Dem, nationalists, we're all on a constant mission to change our country for the better. The question is, how do you get that change? And for me, it's simple. You don't get the change you want by ripping your country apart. You don't get change by undermining your economy and damaging your businesses and diminishing your place in the world. But you can get real, concrete change on Thursday if you vote no. Business as usual is not on the ballot paper. The status quo is gone. The campaign has swept it away. There's no going back to the way things were. A vote for no means real change. And we've spelt out that change in practical terms with a plan and a process. If we get a no vote on Thursday, that will trigger a major unprecedented program of devolution with additional powers for the Scottish Parliament. Major new powers over tax, spending, some welfare services. We've agreed a timetable for that stronger Scottish Parliament a timetable to bring in the new powers that will go ahead if there is a no vote. A white paper by November, put into draft legislation by January. This is a timetable that's now agreed by all the main political parties and set in stone. And I'm prepared to work with all the main parties to, to deliver this during 2015. So a no vote actually means faster, fairer, safer and better change. And this is a vital point. Scotland is not an observer in the affairs of this country. Scotland is shaping and changing the United Kingdom for the better, more so today perhaps than at any point in the last 300 years. And Scotland will continue to help shape the constitution of our country. And Scottish people can enjoy the additional powers it, its parliament gives without losing the UK pension, the UK pound, or the UK passport. Real change is Scotland's for the taking. The power to set your own course and make your own decisions, but with the security of being in the United Kingdom and without the risks of going it alone. It is the best of both worlds. Now, Scotland's identity 
it is already strong. Strong Scottish culture, strong Scottish arts, a strong church of Scotland. And in the last 15 years, you've built a strong Scottish parliament. Not a fleeting institution, but a permanent one. So the vote on Thursday, it is not about whether Scotland is a nation. Scotland is a proud, strong, successful nation. The vote on Thursday is about two competing visions for Scotland's future. There is the nationalist vision, narrowing down, going it alone, breaking all ties with the United Kingdom. Or there is the patriotic vision of a strong Scottish nation allied to the rest of the United Kingdom with its own stronger Scottish Parliament at its heart and with the benefits of working together in the UK on jobs, on pensions, on healthcare funding, the currency and interest rates. It really is the best of both worlds and it's the best way to get real change and secure a better future for your children and your grandchildren, which is what this vital debate is all about. And speaking of family, that is quite simply how I feel about all of this. We are a family. The United Kingdom is not one nation. We are four nations in a single country. That can be difficult, but it's wonderful. Scotland, England, Wales, Northern Ireland, different nations with individual identities, competing with each other, even at time enraging each other but while still being so much stronger together. We are a family of nations. And why should the next generation of that family be forced to choose whether to identify only with Edinburgh or only with London? Why should they have to choose which embassy they want to go to when they're in trouble abroad? Or pack their passport when they're going to see friends and loved ones and family? A family is not a compromise or a second best. It is a magical identity that makes us more together than we can ever be apart. So please, do not break this family apart. In human relations, it's almost never a good thing to turn away from each other, to put up walls or to score new lines on a map. Why should we take one Great Britain and turn it into separate, smaller nations? What is that an answer to? How will that help? Ambitious young people who want to make their mark on the world. Or the pensioner who just wants security. Or the family relying on jobs that are made in the UK. Let no one fool you that yes is a positive vision. It is about dividing people. It's about closing doors. It's about making foreigners of our friends and family. That is not an optimistic vision. Optimistic vision is of our family of nations staying together, there for each other in the hard times, coming through to better times. We have just pulled through a great recession together. We're now mo moving forward together. The road has been long, but it is finally leading upwards. And that's why I ask you to vote no to walking away. Vote no and you are voting for a bigger, and broader and better future for Scotland, and you're investing in the future for your children and grandchildren. So this is our message to the people of Scotland. We want you to stay. Head, heart, and soul, we want you to stay. Please don't mix up the temporary and the permanent. Please don't think, I'm frustrated with politics right now, so I'll walk out the door and never come back. If you don't like me, I won't be here forever. If you don't like this government, it won't last forever. But if you leave the United Kingdom, that will be forever. Yes, the different parts of the UK don't always see eye to eye. Yes, we need change and we will deliver it. But to get that change, to get a brighter future, we don't need to tear our country apart.
In two days' time, this long campaign will be at an end. And as you stand in the stillness of the polling booth, I hope you'll ask yourself this. Will my family and I truly be better off by going it alone? Will we really be more safe and secure? Do I really want to turn my back on the rest of Britain? And why is it that so many people across the world are asking, why would Scotland want to do that? Why? And if you don't know the answer to these questions, then please vote no. At the end of the day, all the arguments of this campaign can be reduced to a single fact. We are better together. So as you reach your final decision, please, please, don't let anyone tell you you can't be a proud Scot and a proud Brit. Please, don't lose faith in what this country is and what we can be. Don't forget what a great United Kingdom you are a part of. Don't turn your backs on what is the best family in the nations in the world and the best hope for your family in this world. So please, from all of us, vote to stick together, vote to stay, vote to save our United Kingdom. Thank you. <laughs>